All right, everyone. We're going to talk about motifs and archetypes. We're looking at the ancient assembly of the gods here. And we're looking at Inki. And he's got those two rivers flowing from him. On the left, you have the master of animals. It's that central figure flanked by the two, right? These are the identifying markers of squatter men. We've got the bull of heaven, and of course, the assembly of the gods. And these guys, they've got horns on their head. Just like the devil, of course, has horns. This guy is Dr. Irving Finkel. He's a scholar and he's a curator at the British Museum. Super cool, very smart. This guy's awesome. He looks like a wizard. And he talks about the library of Ashurbanipal. Ashurbanipal is considered the last great Assyrian king. And he was on a mission to put together this epic library of documents, tablets in cuneiform and other languages. Now he's named Asher Banapal for a reason. I mean, Asher is a Google search for Asher God. This is the same type of iconography you get when you look up uh, the Zoroastrian um, gods, or rather God. H.G. Wells calls this library the most precious source of historical material in the world. In the library, there's copies of the Epic of Gilgamesh, Inanna's descent into the underworld. And Dr. Finkel, he's talking about um, the first ghosts and these tablets, these ancient clay tablets that uh, reference ghosts and how to get rid of them. So he brings up this imagery and he's talking about Inanna and I'm just astonished that he is not familiar with the Patnia Theron archetype. And that he doesn't recognize it. We've talked about these identifying markers, right? Holding the two and treading on the beast. And I don't know if he is just not aware of the archetype, but he's still a really cool guy. And so the scholars will tell us they have no idea where this archetype comes from. This is one of the books I've been reading, Gods of the Cataclysm. It talks about the sky gods in the north and the child of the sky. A trident carrying bull image. Um, there's all these myths of a, um, a child or a man stepping out of the sun. And so I believe this comes from uh, the squatter man emanating not from the sun, but from the assembly of the gods. We're told the Pillars of Hercules were also called the Pillars of Kronos, a.k.a. the Pillars of Saturn. 
uh, the Atlantic Ocean was once called uh, the Sea of Kronos, the Sea of Saturn. <laughs> oh, we should still call it that. Um, this is a tablet talking about um, the flood and that the gods were stretched out, motionless, pressing one against another like dogs. Ishtar wailed. You know, I believe this is um, the assembly of the planet gods, pressing one against another. Ishtar is, of course, squatter man. This, there's this archetype of uh, the first man, um, but this is a cosmic man. We see this in uh, Norse mythology with Ymir. His uh, bones become the mountains. His hair is the trees. His brains are the clouds. His skull um, forms the heavens. And of course, we have the uh, bull of heaven in the picture here. Emir drinks the milk of the bull of heaven. This is that uh, cosmic mountain that I talk about that the uh, squatter man emerges from. I see this archetype in uh, the Zoroastrian Gaiomart. Lived for 3,000 years. Um, and of course we have the primeval ox, the bull of heaven in the picture. And uh, this is Gaiomard holding the two and treading on the beasts. So I believe this is that uh, cosmic mountain, Mount Meru, Mount Sumeru, that ultimately gives us Squatter Man. Flanked by the two under the assembly of the gods. Back to uh, Ashurbanipal. It's really interesting because he talks about, he, he, he boasts, he says, I'm the king of the world. I'm the king of the universe.